All right, in this video, we are going to look at a very interesting book, Mathematics for Self-Study, second edition, and the book is called Calculus for the Practical Man. It's by Thompson. So the name is really quite peculiar. Um, I don't think there's any other calculus book with that name, which is kind of interesting. There's so many books called Calculus. So this one has a name that is a little bit different. And I just have to smell my copy because I can already smell it and I just, it's like intoxicating. Oh, wow. Calculus for the Practical Man. A group of books that make easy the home study of the working principles of mathematics by J.E. Thompson, Associate Professor of Mathematics, School of Engineering, Pratt Institute. And look, there's other titles. Arithmetic for the Practical Man, Algebra for the Practical Man, Geometry for the Practical Man, Trigonometry for the Practical Man, Calculus for the Practical Man, Manual of the Slide Rule. These books are very hard to get, unfortunately. I'm pretty sure, like, I don't have all of these, and there's a reason for that. It's probably the cost. Um, so I have this one, and so yeah, I just thought I would show it to you. I will leave links in the description um, to this book in case you want to check it out. If I can find it, I don't recall how hard it is to find. I remember these being a little bit pricey though, and so I have not bought them yet. Now, 1931, 1946. Let's, let's read the preface. This is bound to be very, very interesting. This book on simplified calculus is one of a series designed by the author and publisher for the reader with an interest in the meaning and simpler technique of mathematical science. And for those who wish to obtain a practical mastery of some of the more usual and directly useful branches of the science without the aid of a teacher. That's a very long sentence. <laughs> like the other books in this series, it is the outgrowth of the author's experience with students such as those mentioned and the demand experienced by the publisher for books which may be read as well as studied. Okay, here he talks a little bit about the outstanding features. One of the outstanding features of the book is the use of the method of rates instead of the method of limits. That is true, that is an interesting feature. To the conventional teacher of mathematics, whose students work for a college degree and look toward the modern theory of functions, the author hastens to say that for their purposes, the limit method is the only method which can be profitably be used. The readers contemplated in the preparation of this book, however, the notion of a limit and any method of calculation based upon it always seems artificial and not in any way connected with the familiar ideas, I see, of numbers, algebraic symbolism, or natural phenomena. I, I, I agree, but at the same time, I also think that the limiting process is beautiful. So, um, and I think that, uh, you know, calculus is a beautiful subject. I mean, the idea of, you know, getting infinitely close to something, the fact that we can make that precise using some you know mathematical logic and some symbols you know that that's that says something about mathematics right it's it's the idea of being able to describe a limit uh you know via epsilons and deltas and absolute values and inequalities you know you can get infinitely close to something and we as human beings have created that with calculus so i don't necessarily agree uh with everything there but it's good to have opinions that's why we have different books so chapter one is on fundamental ideas, rates and differentials. Chapter two is on functions and derivatives. Chapter three is on differentials of algebraic functions. This is gonna be really interesting. We should take a look at some of these sections later in the video. Chapter four, four use, use of rates and differentials in solving problems. Five, differentials of trigonometric functions. Six, velocity acceleration and derivatives. That's pretty cool. Seven, interpretation of functions and derivatives by means of graphs. That's really important. You know, I think that um, being able to, to graph things in mathematics is key. I used to have this friend and he would just, a really smart guy, and he showed me something. I learned something from him. And that was, I learned that in order to solve problems sometimes, drawing a graph is important. And I should have learned it years before, you know, that moment. But always try to draw a picture of what you're doing if you can. Uh, maximum, minimum values problems in maxima and minima, and then differentials of logarithmic and exponential functions. Quite a lot of material in this little book. Summary of differential formulas. Reversing the process of differentiation. So yeah. And then integrals. How to use integral formulas. Lots of little subsections. 
And then at the end we have the natural law of growth and the number E. Yeah, cool. So let's take a look at some of the book. Here he talks about rates. Let's jump ahead to something and just see what we find. Go here to, here we go, velocity and acceleration. Find the second derivative of, okay, so they give you here polynomial function. That's really easy to differentiate. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. I guess I already am zoomed in, yep. So find the derivative of, so they give you a function there and you find the derivative. So they just use the power rule, it's pretty easy. And they find the second derivative, okay. And here we go, if y equals sine x, show that the second derivative equals negative y. Okay, that's pretty easy. We have the second derivative of the tangent function, pretty easy. Looks pretty standard, right? The examples don't look um, difficult. Lots of examples though, right? We're already on example four. You see, he, he, he doesn't mess around, right? He just goes, question, solution, question, solution, question, solution, just, you know, straight up examples. Find the first, second, and third derivatives of, that's great, it's a good example. Here's another example. In the following expression, s is distance in feet and t is time in seconds, okay. Find the velocity v and acceleration a at the end of three seconds from the start of the motion t equals three. Right, so if s is your position function, because it's the distance in feet, therefore it's a position function, it gives you the position um, as time varies, basically, so you plug in a value of time and it gives you a value of position. Its derivative is the velocity, and the derivative of velocity is acceleration, so basically they just take derivatives here and then they plug in the number three. And then here we have s as a function of t. Oh, I guess it's a position function, find v and a. So same thing here, same thing there. So six examples, I mean, that's, that's pretty instructive. I think it's page 73, page 74. Okay, and then we have exercises. So here are the exercises. You can see, so we have to find some second derivatives, okay? And then it says find the velocity. So it's the same thing he just taught you, right? This is, these are the same things you saw in the book, right? Like we just went over that. And so in theory, after seeing those examples, I think, I think that most people can actually do these problems. And so by definition, that makes this a good book, right? Because it's a book that you can read and understand and then do the exercises. Not only that, you have answers to every single problem. Let's just double check. So this was, that's chapter seven. So chapter six, and there's 15 questions, right? Pretty sure they're all there. Chapter six, let's see, six, six, six. Oh, I forgot the, uh, following the article. I forgot the article on that. Oh no, but yeah, but all of the, uh, cause it's by article in the, uh, see, following article 62, page 184. Well, I guess I can just look it up really quick. Let's just check. That's so chapter six. Let's see where that is in the book. So chapter six, and it was second, and higher order derivatives of functions, so that's gonna be 31. So then we go to the solutions and we look at 31. Kind of a weird way, right, to, to find the answers. I was looking at another book earlier. Um, it's much more advanced than this one. It's called The Theory of Substitutions. It's a really interesting book. I need to make a video on that. It's really weird math that you've probably never seen. They don't, I mean, you go to college and you don't learn this stuff. It's very, very different. Anyways, um, that book is the same in terms of finding things. It's an older book from the 1800s. And this one's pretty old, but that, not that old. So let's see, article. There it is. That's probably it there. Yep, there's 15 solutions. So all the answers are in this book. I'm sorry, I just have to give it a whiff. Just, oh, oh, it, this one smells like an old comic book. I used to collect amazing Spider-Man comic books and that's what this smells like. It has like a little bit of a musty smell. It's just kind of nice. Very, very nice. Look at all of this mathematics. Look at all these integrals. This must be on integral formulas, but I feel like where's the starting point to all this? So, so five, integrate that. Let's look at that one. That's pretty easy. So you make a u substitution there. So he's not doing the substitution. He's just doing it, which is okay. I like to make the substitution because I think people understand it better. But again, we are all meant to disagree perhaps. And then here's another one, number six. Zoom in for this one. Here's a, got trig functions. We've got this integral here, secant minus tangent. 
being multiplied by secant of x respect to x. So I guess you multiply everything out, and then from there it's pretty easy. Yeah, pretty easy examples. But there's quite a few, as you can see. Lots of examples here. Lots of examples. And then you get to the exercises, and it's the same thing. So you get to practice what you learned. So wonderful little book, Calculus for the Practical Man. Um, just a really, really interesting book on calculus. I wonder what the other ones are like. Let's, let's go look there again, because I don't have those yet, and I really should buy them again. I think it was just they're expensive. They, they are not, these books are not cheap. Arithmetic for the Practical Man, Algebra for the Practical Man, Geometry for the Practical Man, Trigonometry for the Practical Man, and then this one, Calculus for the Practical Man. So it's a calculus book that has full that has answers, not full solutions, but answers to every problem, and it's readable. You can read the section, do the exercises. It'll teach you a couple of concepts, and then you have those exercises that basically mimic those concepts. So it's very well done, a phenomenal book. Um, and it's created for self-study, right? It's mathematics for self-study. So that was the, the goal. So not a perfect book, but certainly a very good one. And I just wanted to make a video to show you one of my books because I collect books. And I think math books are great. It's a great collectible because you can collect it, you can put it away, and then someday you can take it out and you can sit down and you can learn a little bit. And yeah, I mean, it's pretty awesome. Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please let me know in the comments. Good luck and keep doing math.